guys welcome back to my channel today i filmed this really intense and kind of grungy looking blue glitter spotlight blend for you all and i've also filmed my full current complexion routine as well i know it's been a while since i had actually spoken you through what i was doing complexion wise so that's what i wanted the main focus of this video to be today and i've also thrown in this kind of grungy, hipster, blue, glittery look for you all to enjoy with the complexion as well. So hope you all enjoy it. I'm starting by priming the eyes with the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in the colour Eden. I want the primer to be sticky but not saturated. Eden has a yellow matte undertone so it neutralises the eye area as well as giving a beautiful matte finish. Now I'm going in with the Anastasia Artist palette and the first shade I'll be using from the palette is this beautiful yellow matte called Buttery. Then using the same palette I'm going to take this shade called Dusty Rose and that's going to be my crease and transition shade. I'm going underneath with this shade as well because I want a continuous circle around the outer edge of the eye. Now I'm going to go in and reprime the lid. I know we used Eden but this time I want to use the shimmered Urban Decay eyeshadow primer called Minor Sin. Now we're taking Shimmer Shimmer by Makeup Geek and that's going to be our central shimmered shadow. Now we're taking the Urban Decay Electric palette and the bluish tone I'm going to use today is this colour here in the shade French. Now we've got that solid blue shape on with that beautiful spotlight coming down the centre. It's now time to really smoke it out. I want it to be really focused on the neutral tone, Dusty Rose, and not so much about the blue. So as you can see, I've taken away most of the blue and the, the contrasting eye with just a slight touch of it showing through that dusty pink. So again, going back in with Dusty Rose and a large Morphe blending brush, I'm going to buff away all that blue. This will take the longest amount of time from this eye look guys and to get it super blended please be persistent with it. So after completely blending out the colour fringe with the colour Dusty Rose, I just went back in and strengthened the blue slightly just to give it that kind of edge and let the colour show through the nude transition once again. Now I'm going to go in and put a little touch of black on the inside and the outside corners. Once that black has been patted on in quite a solid shape, I'm just taking the fluffy side of my electric brush and buffing it out. Because I'm not using any liner today in this look, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lash glue just on the root of the lash line and this will help for my lashes to stick a little better. I always find if I, oh I don't want it on my nose. I always find if I'm not wearing any liner, it's a little bit harder to disguise your falsies against your natural lash line. Um, so by putting a little bit extra glue on my lid as well as the lashes, it's going to ensure that the lashes will stick nicely. Now 
Now that I have my lashes on, I'm going to go in and apply some glitter on the bottom lash line. This is Urban Decay's Heavy Metal Glitter Liner and the shade that we're going to be using is called Amp. Now that we've got the glitter on, I'm going to apply Maybelline's Great Lash. This just helps blend our own lashes in with the falsies. Now that we've finished with the eyes and they're looking super glitzy, we can move on to the base. So I've not done a super detailed base for you guys in like forever. Anything I've done has been pretty heavy going. So I just wanted in this video to talk you through my current foundation routine to go with the look that we're doing today as well. So first of all, I'm going to start off with some basics. Next, I'm just going to moisturise with some Molcom Hydrazen. So I want this look to be super, super dewy and I want it to be really, really highlighted. So I'm going to be taking NARS Coco Cabana, which is my ultimate ride or die highlighter at the minute. And I'm going to just put it all over my face. This is a great step if you're doing a super strobed out look because as you can see it just illuminates the full face and gives an amazing base for underneath your foundation if you want that really strobed out shiny look. The only time I would maybe avoid doing this is if you have quite a lot of blemishes because you don't want to highlight them. The foundation that I'm going to use as always is my ultimate favourite foundation and it's 5.0 in Naked Skin by Urban Decay. Now taking a damp beauty blender and some Naked Skin Concealer in the shade Light Warm, I'm going to do a central highlight in underneath the eyes. It's kind of like a mini contour, except I'm doing it without the dark spots. So I'm literally just doing the lighter bits that I would have if I was doing a full cream contour. I'm being very mindful that I'm not going to catch any of the smokiness underneath the smoky eye. Um, if you do think that you've lost a bit of that, which we probably will, I would go back in with your blending brush and just kind of aim for a seamless blend with it. So I'm highlighting that whole underneath panel of my eye.
Now, 9 times out of 10, if you're doing this with a lighter concealer, concealer does set. So that is why we have to have the Beauty Blender damped for this stage. If the sponge was dry, it wouldn't move the product as much. It was maybe just set it in the place that it was in. We really want to sheer the product out and have it highlight but be a seamless blend. I learned a great thing the other day for um, washing your beauty blenders, mine's this one in particular, this is an OPV one that I'm using so it's not the original beauty blender, it's a little bit larger, um, but the Lush shampoo bars are actually amazing for taking any dirt and grime out of your beauty blender and because I use a cinnamon one, now my beauty blender smells like amazing Lush cinnamon. Now while my base is still tacky, I've not powdered anything, I'm going to do my highlighting. So I'm taking MAC Soft and Gentle, which is a mineralised product. It's beautiful, it's quite a soft peach sheen and it's the double-ended Urban Decay brush that I'm using to apply it. And I'm just going right on the cheekbone. And as I said, with this look, I want it all about the highlights, so I'm going a bit stronger than usual with it. And I just think where if you do it while your foundation's wet, it lasts longer throughout the day and it gives a more intense look. Sometimes if you apply too much highlighter on top of a face that's already powdered, it can look quite bruised. So I just prefer doing it this way. You can always strengthen it up later on if you feel that you've lost too much when powdering. Just on the tip of the nose as well. Now I'm taking Urban Decay's Fair Cool Powder Foundation. I'm running out. And I'm setting all the highlighted parts of the face, so down the centre and underneath the eyes. And yes, I'm just going right over the top of that highlight that we've done. It's quite good to take the beauty blender back in at this point with your powder, and that way you don't get too much of a caked effect with your powder. the dampness of the sponge really works well with the Urban Decay powder foundations. When they first launched these foundations they told us they could be used wet or dry. I was very very sceptical about it at first, in fact I'm sure I spoke about it in a video that I wasn't keen on using it wet, but with a really damp beauty blender it works just a trick without it looking too cakey or crumbly. So that was all my highlighting done, now with the same powder foundation but in the shade medium light neutral, I'm going to set the rest of my face. Now time to bronze. Now recently what I've been doing is using a transition shade when it comes to my bronzer. This may seem insane to some of you to put another step into a complexion routine like this, but I've really been finding that it softens my natural bronzer down and doesn't make it as muddy looking. So I'm going to take my Naked Flushed palette and the colour is Streak and this one has seen better days. And I'm going to be using the bronzer from it. I love this bronzer as a transition bronzer. It's not dark enough to be my actual bronzer, but it really works well with the bronzer that I'm using at the minute. So I'm just using it below that highlight. underneath my chin and just up in my hairline as well
Now I know that bronzer is nowhere near dark enough for me but I know now that when I use an intense bronzer that is very dark it's going to be just much more of a seamless blend with it. My bronzer that I'm going to use is MAC Sun Power, it's a mineralized skin finish powder, um, it's my favourite and as you can see it's intensely dark so that's why I felt the need to use the streak palette just before I went in with this. And I keep the depth very close to the hairline and then really buff and feather it out the closer I come to the corner of the mouth. And curve it up and around the eye because you want to really encase the eye with it as well. And then I don't take any more on the brush, I just take the excess into the hairline because it can be a little intense. And then again, just with my damp beauty blender, I'm just sealing all that in. And I don't know if you all know this or not, but I don't usually wear blush at the minute. I'm just using my bronzer. Um, and I think now we can go and do the lips. The lip shade we're going to use today is Anastasia Beverly Hills Dusty Rose. And that's the same shade that we used as our transition colour on the eyes, which I think will tie this look together really nicely. 